In this video, I'm going to give you the crash course on Webflow templates. Hey, my name's Finn. I'm a full-time Webflow developer, and over the next few minutes, here's what I'm going to show you. First, we'll look at how to buy the right template. Then, I'm going to show you how to organize its pages. We'll customize its static content, then its CMS content. I'll also show you how to copy and delete layouts. This is really useful. Make sure you stay till the end because the last thing I'm going to show you is two common mistakes that beginners make when editing Webflow templates. So stick around for that. After following these steps, your template will be set up and looking pro. So let's get started. The first step is to choose a template on webflow.com slash templates. For this example, let's imagine that I'm a UX designer and I'm looking for a portfolio website template. So I'm going to search for portfolio and you want to browse around and find some templates that you like. You can click on any of these templates to read a bit more about it. And you can actually click over here in preview in browser. And this allows us to see what the template actually looks like on the web. We want to make sure that the template looks good on all the pages. It has the layouts we need on those pages and that it's not overly complicated. Now we also want to make sure that it has the right pages and the right CMS collections. So what we want to do is click preview in designer and this will take us into Webflow. And this is great because Webflow allows us to actually check the back end of their templates before we buy them. Once Webflow loads, we can click on the pages icon over here and we can just see which pages this template comes with. We can also see the CMS collections. What are CMS collections? Well, in Webflow, we have databases to organize our content. These are called CMS collections. CMS collections are extremely useful for organizing things such as portfolio projects, blog posts, and ranking your favorite episodes of The Gentleman. Now I'm gonna show you how the CMS works in a moment, but for now, just think of it as a way we can organize our content in a tidy way. And because I'm a UX designer looking for a portfolio template, I wanna make sure that this template has a portfolio CMS, and maybe also a blog so I can write and publish my content. All looking good, then it's time to buy your template. So let's begin actually editing our template. Start by clicking on your website to open the Webflow Designer. Now, once Webflow loads, the first thing I would do is I'd click over here on this pages icon and we can just look around what pages the template has again and just see what we have available. If your template has multiple variations of pages, they might be organized into folders just like you're seeing right here. Right here we have home pages, V1, 2, and 3, and we have some about page variations too. For the home page, I decided that I like this one, so I'm going to drag it outside the folder. I'm going to click on settings and I'm going to make it my home page. And once that's finished, I'll delete the old home page. If your desired homepage is already your homepage, then there's no need to do anything. You may also want to rename some pages and delete some other pages you're not planning to use. So you can do that by clicking on the cog, opening the page settings, and you can rename here. So now that we've organized our pages, let's start editing the content on those pages. For text, you can click on the headings and paragraphs, and you can rewrite them directly on the page. For images, click the cog icon here and you can upload directly from your computer. To change a button's link, you can click the cog here and you can see this first option is for pasting a URL. The next option is choosing a page on our site. Or we can also create an email or phone number link. This depends on what your button does when the user clicks it. Some elements like navigation bars and footers will be green. Now, this means that it's a component. Changes made on any instance of a component will carry through throughout the website. Let me show you. To edit this component, double click on the green. And now we're editing the nav bar component, which is also on every other page of this website. To show you the example, I'm going to duplicate this nav button. I can select it and command C, command V to duplicate the button. Now when I click out of the component and I go to the about page, we'll see that this change has carried through here as well. 
Pretty cool, huh? Now, you're gonna wanna go through all your pages and just repeat this process. Customize the headings, customize the images, but at some point you may have tried to edit some purple content, but no matter how many times you clicked, you couldn't do it. It's time to talk about CMS content. Remember those CMS collections that I talked to you about earlier? Well, they're how we organize things like our blog posts and our portfolio pieces. And the content on that page is actually coming from the back end, which is why we can't edit it. You can click on the CMS icon over here, and then you'll see all the CMS collections in your template. Each collection usually has a name that explains what it's for. For example, portfolio projects and blog posts. If we click on the portfolio CMS, we can see the placeholder portfolio projects that came with our template. We can click on settings, and then we can see the fields that this collection uses. The portfolio collection has all the data we need on our portfolio page. A title, a description, image fields, client name, testimonial, dates and links, all the data that makes up our portfolio. When we create a new portfolio item, or we add a new portfolio item, all we have to do is fill out these fields and press create. Let me show you how that works. First, I'm gonna set the name of this portfolio piece. Then I'm gonna work my way down this list, adding a description, thumbnail image, work category, and filling out the client's info, etc., etc. Just fill out all the fields you need and keep in mind that your template might have fields that you don't need. So for now, just leave those fields blank, that's okay. Now, once we press create up here, the new portfolio piece will join the list which sits at the front end, all neatly organized. Now, you wanna continue adding all your portfolio projects, then delete the default ones that came with the template. If we look on the front end, we'll see our portfolio coming together nicely. We can see that each element on the front end in purple is connected to a CMS field on the back end. And this is actually why we couldn't edit the template when we first tried. Now, another important point here. When you create a new CMS item, another page is automatically generated for that CMS item. When users click on the portfolio piece we just created, they're taken to that item's page. And you can view this page by clicking the page icon and heading down to the purple CMS pages. Then click on the template page for your collection. In this case, our portfolio pages. Now, what happens if you wanna add a new field into the CMS? For example, let's say you wanted to add the client's country. There is no existing field in the CMS for the client country. So to add a new field, scroll to the bottom of your CMS's settings and click add field. Now you'll see a lot of different field types appear here. And for the purposes of time, I can't cover all these fields here. But running with our example of adding a client country field, we can click on plain text and name it client country. This is just a simple plain text field that we can link to an element on the front end, any heading or piece of text. So next, we wanna actually go to our portfolio projects in the CMS and we wanna find that field we just created. And then we can add that portfolio pieces country. Finally, we need to go to the front end where we want this to display. I want the client's country to display under the client name here. So I'm gonna duplicate this box here to give me another segment. I'll rename the heading to client country and then click on the purple text here and switch it from client name to that new field, client country. And that's how you add a new field into the CMS. There's many more resources online about how you can do this. So feel free to check out Webflow CMS videos on YouTube. Now let's move on to duplicating and moving layouts. In Webflow, it's super easy to copy paste layouts between pages. It's a really, really cool skill to have. So let's say I love this section on the about page, but I want it on my homepage too. We can simply click on the section in the navigator and copy it by pressing Command C. Then go to your homepage, click the body up here and paste the section in with the other sections. And you can drag the section anywhere you want. We can rearrange the order of any sections by dragging them around, or we can even delete them. For example, I don't have any awards as a designer, so I'm gonna delete this awards section here. I also want my blog to be a bit more visible, so I'm just gonna move up the page by dragging it. Next, a really important part of your template is the contact form. It's how potential clients will reach out to you about opportunities. So you wanna make sure this form is looking and configured how we like.
So navigate to your contact page where you can see what your form looks like. And you might wanna delete something. So for example, I wanna delete this project type section. And I can do that by pressing delete. Templates are made to be modified. So feel free to delete things, move things around, modify things, that's what they're for. And by now your portfolio should be looking pretty great. Your static contents like your headings and images should be customized. And now your portfolio projects have been added to your CMS and they're displaying nicely on our front end. But there's a couple of mistakes that beginners make when they just get started with Webflow templates. And I'm gonna share those with you today. Firstly, a lot of beginners forget to add their email in form settings. If you don't do this, you won't get any notifications when someone fills out your contact form. So head up to settings over here and click on forms in the sidebar. Here, you wanna add your email. So now Webflow can notify you when a potential client reaches out to you. The next mistake is forgetting to add your SEO title tag and meta description in the page settings. This is what people will see on Google search. And it's also a way that Google tracks your keywords. You can do this by going into your pages settings by clicking the cog here and scrolling down to where it says SEO settings. In your title tag, you wanna write something like your name and service. And in the meta description, you wanna give a brief summary of your product or your service offering. Again, putting in some keywords there would be very helpful. So by now your template should be mostly set up. Don't forget to check what site plans they are. So if you go into site settings here, we can take a look at the different plans that Webflow offers for our site to be hosted. If we click here on plans, we can see what those are. Now you're gonna see four options here. The one that we're gonna be using is the CMS. The reason we're using CMS is because if you remember, we've been adding our CMS projects into the portfolio. So basic wouldn't allow us, so CMS has to be the one. You can upgrade for $23 per month billed yearly, and that's gonna allow us to launch our site on a custom domain. Your next step is to connect your custom domain. And Webflow made a great video about how to do that. Link in the description for that video. Thanks so much for watching this video and making it to the end. If you haven't already, please like the video, it helps me out a lot and subscribe for more useful information about design, Webflow, and other interesting topics. So I'll see you in the next video, and thanks again for watching. Ciao.